this idea? Well, I was influenced by several different model designs of tornado machines, as well as my fascination with tornadoes has really drove me to this point to build this eight-foot model for my experience. Are you think we're going to be able to see the, the cloud form? Of course. Okay, let's, let's, get do, it. let's do it. Let's do it. process with dry ice as the LCO2 uh, will visualize the whole entire process here and okay. we're just using That's this, hot water in this there. boiling water okay. uh, and this will create a very quick right. reaction okay. and now we will activate the updraft oh, fan to provide the exhaust and pull up the convergence of air to form an 8 foot tornado and okay. in about a few seconds here we're going right. to get a formation oh. and it's here we go. Museum last week. Wasn't that neat, Kyle? Yes. That, that new exhibit yes. there? And, and who do I see? But Kyle is there, and I've not met him face to face before. I talked on the phone. I said, We've got to introduce you to our audience at Fermilab. And I talked to Kyle's mom, who's here. Well, I can't see Over here. the light. Right there. <laughs> there. Oh, God. This is Schwartz. Okay. He must be very proud. You know, I, I'll tell you something. I got to hold a camera. This, okay, this okay. young man has got quite a career ahead of him. It's going to be interesting. Good, to he needs to take this. care of me. Now, now, you want to go into meteorology, oh, is that right? Definitely. And specialize <laughs> in engineering to further improve on the designs of tornado machines. You know, and, somehow I think you're going to do it, too. <laughs> I, I, I've seen tornado machines for years, and I've never seen one work quite like that before. That is stunning. How long did you work on that? Well, I, it took me a total of about 20 hours worth of the construction <laughs> of building this in my garage, but uh, certainly it's paid off. It has? <laughs> It's just a great honor to be here to present this to all of you. And it, well, it's an honor for us to have you here, Kyle. Kyle, I, I had to say congratulations. Thank you you so keep up with Thank good work. Yes. Uh, we're going to check back with you and watch it, your studies and your career and all, because I think you're going to do some interesting things in your life. Thank you. Know? you. So, uh, congratulations. Thank you. So, thanks for coming. Thank you. And thank you, Mrs. No, I like it. Your mom is terrific. Thank you, Kyle. Oh, thank thank you. you very much. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, thank you. sure. Good to see you. <laughs> what a nice young man. I, I had to introduce him. You know, I. I'll tell you, we celebrate our athletes and all the rest. When you have a young man who's bright and down to business and, and uh, interested in science, uh, it, it, it's, it's incumbent upon us to stand up and recognize these young people who are coming along. Uh, so that, that, was, uh, that was an amazing uh, machine. I'll tell you that. It is an amazing machine. Well, our next guest and speaker is uh, no stranger to this audience. Ed Fennelin is the meteorologist in charge of the National Weather Service office here in Chicago. with Dr. Marianne Cooper, a fascinating talk, right after the mid-break that's coming up imminently. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, Jim also is going to talk about tornado mist, and boy, he's got some incredible video to show you these storms in action. And Ed Fennell will talk about the big Doppler radar upgrade that's coming later this year, which will uh, revolutionize our ability in, in the short term to use the Perkin radar to better see weather phenomena. But I, I want to show you, just before our break, a, a video you know, the station has encouraged us to open up Facebook pages and Twitter pages and all that. This is the world we're in today. We tweet, we Facebook, we do, you know, blog. Uh, it's, it, in addition to doing television, radio, and the newspaper weather page. And it's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of people that way. I can interact with and get reports in from people that way. But I, I opened up my Facebook page one day, 
to see posted by this young man this incredible video of a tornado machine he had built in his garage. Now, I've seen a lot of tornado machines built in my, my day. Um, the Science and Industry Museum just opened up their biggest exhibit ever. It's an exhibition called Science Storms. It's well worth seeing. In it, they create a four-story high tornado that you can walk into and you can uh, adjust so it changes the shape of this thing. They also arc lightning back and forth across the ceiling. Uh, they have a, a, a tsunami tank where they make tsunamis that you can digitally photograph and then slow down and watch move in slow motion. They have a big 20-foot turntable that creates a continuous avalanche that, as it rotates. Uh, and they have a hole in the ceiling to natural light and create prison rainbows across the ceiling and explain these phenomena. So it's, it's pretty amazing. But other than that tornado, I don't think I've seen one in a laboratory that's uh, quite as impressive as this. So I thought, the minute I saw it, I called everybody in the office over to see this video that this young man had posted. And I thought, he, we have got to get him into Fermilab to introduce him to our audience, to let you see uh, a young and budding scientific mind. And I want to show you, we sent our uh, morning crew uh, out to his garage to see this machine. I want to show this to you. And then we're going to introduce you to Kyle Swartz. Uh, uh, in, in just a moment here. And we're inside your garage. No kidding, his bike is right there. And in here you have your eight foot tornado genesis. Explain yes. what the machine is all about. This entire tornado machine is composed of four columns each, and each one is three fans, as everyone can see. Mm -hmm. uh, and each fan provides what's called inflow. Here to go into the center, mm -hmm. the circulation, mm -hmm. and that is pulled up by an updraft fan. Which is right there. Yes. Kyle, how did you come up with this idea? Well, I was influenced by several different model designs of tornado machines, as well as my fascination with tornadoes has really drove me to this point to build this eight-foot model for my experience. Do you think we're going to be able to see the, the cloud form? Of course. Okay, let's, let's, get do let's do it. How do we start? Uh, well, we will, of course, visualize the process with dry ice as no CO2 uh, will visualize the whole entire process here. And okay. We're just using That's this, hot water in there. Boiling water. Okay. Uh, and this will create a very quick right. reaction. Okay. And now we will activate the updraft oh, fan to provide the exhaust and pull up the convergence of air to form an eight-foot tornado. In okay. about a few seconds here, we're going right. to get a formation. Oh. And it's, here we go. Happening. So how would this help scientists? Wow. Well, with my experiments, I use, uh, I vary the speed of the inflow, the updraft, as well as the direction of the air. And with these type of measurements, it allows me to get a better understanding of how tornadoes form in the real world. Now, how in the world did you ever come up with the idea to do this thing, uh, this tornado oh. machine, which is spectacular, by Thank the way? You. So I think we're going to call you Mr. Tornado Jr. We, uh, Ted Fujita always was called Mr. Tornado. He would sign his books, but you're Mr. Tornado Jr. because that's amazing, Thank Kyle. You. It really is. Now, how did you come up with a concept for this and, and pull this on? Well, ever since I was very small, I've, ever, I've always been very fascinated by tornadoes and yeah. different many models out there, such as Dr. Vegeta's, I've been inspired by, and I believe yeah. the importance of weather forecasting can be helped by the uh, different designs of tornado machines, and uh, for the future, I dream of building a 60-foot tall tornado machine. Oh, God. <laughs> most powerful tornado that can be comparable to a real life tornado wow. and we can get extreme amounts of data from that at any time we want uh, that would of course revolutionize our way of the challenges that we face in intercepting tornadoes out there in nature when in the laboratory we can take those similar me measurements anytime we want so that would also be a revolution in Absolutely. Yeah, you, br you bring it into the laboratory, put it in a form that you can study it yes. uh, at, outside the wildness of the real world that we live in, 
And that's what Dr. Vegeta did. He had a tornado machine. I might add, his didn't produce a funnel near as spectacular as yours. And because uh, we were down there, we were always fascinated by that. Well, now you want to go into meteorology. Yeah. Like, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Well, you are quite a young man. things I get a kick out of uh, is the, the seriousness with which you approach the subject, and uh, I think that's great. Kyle, much success to you. Thank you so I, I keep much. in touch with Thank all you. of us, so I can, we can keep everybody here posted on how you do. And it's, yours is going to be an interesting career to follow, I'll tell you that. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for staying up late. Mrs. Schwartz, thank you for okay. bringing us oh, to here for us. And, and you travel safely, all right? You've been here for both shows. You've got to be tired. Uh, well, right. this, this, this program, I've been, been more than honored to be here. This well, is good. It, very it's, great. Well, we're honored to have you. Thank, thank you, Kyle. You. Thanks thank very you. much. <laughs> you just did it. Good to see you, too. Well, folks, we're going to take a 15-minute mid-break.